Thank you for joining us to discuss the Colorado Partnership for Quality Jobs and Services Bill, House Bill 1153. You may also hear this bill talked about as the Collective Bargaining Bill or the WINS Bill. The bill has its foundation in Executive Order D-02807, which authorized partnership agreements between agencies within the governor's purview and employee organizations. Once the executive order was signed, the first step was for each of the seven occupational groups in the state to hold elections to select the employee organization. Elections were held and Colorado WINS was selected by employees for each of the seven occupational groups. The Colorado Partnership for Quality Jobs and Services Bill was introduced in the General Assembly in January 2020 and has made its way out of the House and is on its way to the Senate. While we cannot predict what will happen, early indications are that the bill will pass. The bill recognizes Colorado WINS as a union representing most employees, and we will discuss who they represent shortly. It is key to remember that the bill obligates managers, supervisors, and executives to be neutral with respect to employees joining and participating in union activities or deciding not to do so. The bill also sets up a framework for a single statewide partnership agreement with WINS on wages, hours, and terms and conditions of employment. The bill also allows the possibility of agency-specific side agreements. This slide shows which employees are covered. There are approximately 39,000 state employees, and that is represented by the outer circle. As you know, we have classified and non-classified employees. There are about 30,000 classified employees. Of those classified employees, 25,000 are covered employees, and what that means is they are represented by WINS for the purposes of partnership agreement, negotiation, and implementation. Of the covered employees, WINS currently has about 1,875 members. The difference between a member and covered employee is members are individuals who elected to pay membership dues to WINS. There are several types of employees who fall within the classified system but are not covered employees. You can see those listed on this slide. Confidential employees are people who are required to develop or present management positions with respect to employer-employee relations. Managerial employees are people of significant responsibility for formulating or administering agency policies. Executive employees are people who primarily manage or direct the work of two or more other employees and have the authority or the ability to make recommendations with respect to hiring, firing, advancement, and other changes of statutes. Employees working to implement this bill, the Colorado Partnership for Quality Jobs and Services Bill, are also excluded and are not covered employees, as well as administrative law judges and hearing officers, state troopers, employees of the legislative branch, and temporary employees. This slide shows for each agency the approximate number of covered employees. In the left column, you see the agency, and in the second column, the total number of employees. The third column is the number of classified employees within that organization, and the fourth column is an approximation of the total number of covered employees. The state personnel director is responsible for deciding which employees are covered and will work on setting up rules as necessary to aid agencies to help in understanding that. If the bill passes, this slide talks about the implementation timeline. The bill would become effective in July 2020, and we will start to negotiate the first statewide partnership agreement with WINS. Negotiation for the state will be led by the Department of Personnel and Administration with assistance and consultation with the agencies. Once the agreement is reached between the state and Colorado WINS, all covered employees, regardless of membership, will be entitled to vote on the agreement. When the agreement is ratified, if there are any fiscal consequences, like an across-the-board raise, the governor will put it in his fiscal year 22 budget request. We anticipate that the first partnership agreement will be limited in scope. During the 2021 legislative session, we will begin negotiating the second statewide partnership agreement. This will follow a similar process to the first, but will likely be more comprehensive and be multi-year. Again, all covered employees, regardless of membership, will be entitled to vote on the agreement, and the governor will put any fiscal requests in his fiscal year 23 budget. Any statewide partnership agreements after that will be voted on only by WINS members, 
those covered employees who pay dues. We also understand that agencies have specific cultures and relationships between managers and staff. After the second statewide partnership agreement is entered, there is a possibility of having agency-specific agreements. The bill recognizes executive and management rights and specifically does not impair the rights of executives and management to exercise rights or responsibilities pursuant to the state personnel system, determine or carry out missions of agencies, establish and oversee budget finances and accounting, determine utilization of technology, procure and administer con contracts, make, amend, and enforce or revoke personal conduct rules, and take any action necessary in an emergency. The bill also recognizes the duties of the state. Specifically, we are required to make payroll deductions for people who have elected to pay dues to WINS. We are also required to provide WINS the home address, phone number, cell number, and personal email address of covered employees, but there will be a process for employees to tell us not to do that. And WINS is allowed to participate in new employee orientations. The bill also outlines activities the state is not allowed to do. We cannot take any action or make any statement in favor or opposition to an employee's decision to participate or not participate in the union. We cannot expend monies or resources in a negative campaign against the union. We cannot interfere with, discharge, or discriminate against any covered employee from exercising any rights in the bill, including joining or organizing for the union. And we cannot refuse to participate in the partnership agreement, formation, or dispute process. This means we have a good faith requirement to participate in those discussions. The union also has rights and duties under the bill. One of those is they have reasonable access to covered employees at work. What reasonable access is will be determined through the partnership agreement, and we can see side agreements here with respect to agencies allowing access into their specific facilities. WINS is the only union that will have access to employees during these sessions unless the general public is also authorized. WINS cannot cause or encourage any action that disrupts the day-to-day -day operations of the state. This includes sick outs, strikes, work stoppages, or work slowdowns. The Division of Human Resources within the Department of Personnel and Administration will develop training for agencies. This will include how to determine who is a covered employee, the neutrality requirement with respect to managers, supervisors, and executives in the treatment of members of the union, and how to avoid unfair labor practice. An unfair labor practice is the failure by a manager, supervisor, or executive in fulfilling any of its duties or taking any steps it's prohibited from in the bill. We will be sending out a joint letter between WINS and the Department of Personnel and Administration to all employees explaining the bill. In the meantime, there are three agreements concerning payroll deductions, new employee orientations, and employee contact information with respect to people within the governor's purview. The first side agreement concerns payroll deductions. WINS is responsible for maintaining the list of members and providing that list monthly to the state. Agencies will then process that list as they have been doing. Central payroll will then provide the monthly payment to WINS and a report reflecting which due deductions we have done. If a WINS member no longer wants to be a member or is complaining about dues, it is our responsibility to direct them to WINS and that is then something WINS will manage. As we've discussed, WINS will have access to new employee orientations. This will be at least 30 minutes during a new employee orientation and cannot be the last session of an orientation. During the WIN section of the new employee orientation, non-covered employees will not be present and WINS can distribute materials during that time. The state will provide the name, job title, department, and work location of newly hired employees to WINS 48 hours in advance of a new employee orientation and will provide them with notice of any new employee orientations at least 10 days in advance. The Department of Personnel and Administration and WINS will prepare a communication to give to new employees before the WINS session of a new employee orientation. The third side agreement concerns the requirement of the bill that the state provide covered employees home address, phone number, cell number, and personal email address to WINS. 
For existing employees, the Department of Personnel and Administration will set up a process and communicate to employees three times as to how they can tell us to not provide that information. While we are going through that process, we will not provide any contact information to WINS concerning covered employees. For new employees, they will receive instructions on how to tell the state not to provide that information in new employee orientation, and all employees at any time can direct the state to not provide that information to WINS. Thank you for taking the time to learn about the Colorado Partnership for Quality Jobs and Services Bill. If you have any questions, please reach out to your agency HR team. Thank you for your time.